Well, on today's uh, Life Pro Tips by Ian, how to, how to become wealthy. Uh, step number one, don't have hobbies. You know, none, none of building this fun, expensive stuff. Um, step number two uh, to becoming wealthy, don't add new hobbies if you already have hobbies. Um, yes, we are on the road to despair. And what happened today? But we got an Ender 3 Pro from Micro Center. 100 bucks. Can't beat that with a stick. I guess we could, but I don't want to break anything. Um, I've been holding out a long time uh, on the whole 3D printer thing. I'm personally, if people think I'm so. Some people think I'm quite talented at what I do down here. I'm okay. I'm mediocre. Um, however, 3D printing has always intimidated me. Um, and I'm generally not intimidated by any kind of tech. Uh, but yeah, I was just kind of like, eh. at first I was like, eh, I don't know. This is, let's see when they start making them work a little better. Well, these work really good. These Ender 3s have been around for years now. And the guy that's making the custom tank parts for me, he's printing them on an Ender 3. Not even a Pro. Just a regular Ender 3. So I figured for 99 bucks, you know, plus tax out the door, if he sends me the part and it's not perfect, and I say, yeah, it's not quite perfect, he could just tweak the STL files, the print files, and, uh, you know, email it over to me, and I could just pop it out on this, for this sucker once a week, you know, hopefully get it calibrated and working properly. So anyway, we're going to get this put together and do something. I'm not doing, I've watched a few tutorial videos already on setting up the Ender 3, the software, you know, assembly, you know, gotchas, watch out for, I'm not doing one of those videos. There's people way better than me at doing that. I'm just going to show you what I blew another hundred bucks on, then I'm going to show it to you put together, and then we might even, maybe, potentially get it to print something tonight. Slim chance of that, though. Slim. But maybe. Maybe. All right. We'll be back. Hey, we're all assembled. You kids ready for something anticlimactic? Uh, contact. Hey, Ender. <clears throat> the Ender of Wallets. Not really. I mean, very affordable. Ah, look at that. It's not super noisy. That's pretty cool. I think we have to go to the motion menu here. Auto home. It's going to go home. This thing's... I mean, it's a 3D printer. They're not... They're not race cars. It's centering itself and figuring itself out, finding its, its zero points, I guess. I've watched the demo of it. Yeah, they, like I said, the other 3D printer people... Um, one tip I will give you that no one's mentioned yet. This is an APC battery backup. Uh, Triplite makes them also. Those are the two best brands. Been in IT for 25 years. Really, APC is the only one we normally buy. Put it on some kind of battery backup unit. Because if you're in the middle of a print and you just get just a couple seconds of power outage, you don't want this thing to go fakakta and forget what it was doing and ruin potentially a, a multi-day print that you have going on. Uh, so power, plug it into a battery backup. Not only is that a great surge protector, <clears throat> but in the event of a momentary power loss, you know, you won't ruin your print. Because I've never heard anyone say that yet. And I've watched a few of these how-to and quick start and other videos, tips and tricks I've heard. Um, nothing about battery backup units. I'm sure somebody's mentioned it. So you can correct me, but I haven't heard it myself. Um, so that's, that's the, that's the, the 3D printer. Um, if you get it at Micro Center, it comes with a $10 off, a, a one kilogram, or whatever, $10 off any filament purchase in the future. I wonder if it's only good on inland filters, or it's good on any filters, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but there's a $10 coupon. There's a, uh, there's a spackle knife, uh, for to scrape off your prints when they're done, if it needs scraping. There's a little... This little guy looks kind of like an airbrush uh, cleaner. This is possibly uh, a little pin to clean out the nozzle for two if you get the plastics stuck in there. Um, you know, if the Easy Bake Oven gets clogged with the schmoo, you got to poke it out. And then we got our big roll of this stuff. Gray filament. Why do they get gray? Because that's the only damn color they had in stock. Apparently there's a run on, uh, you know, plastic printer filaments, especially PLA. Hey, we do gun plot. Now we have printer plot. Yay! But plot. Um, yeah, it's hard to get apparently. So the thing comes with with a paltry, minuscule amount of plot, and uh, that's it. 
So I have to go upstairs. I have to load a slicer program. I think Cura or Kuro or Cujo, whatever the hell the program's name is. I gotta load that up on the old uh, the old computer and uh, puterize some uh, some files. I have some test files for uh, we gotta balance. We gotta level this whole board. Not level it to the table. Not level it to the earth. We gotta level it to the printhead. So there's some manual leveling we can do to start. And this is is this magnetic? Oh. Oh, I, I was wondering why this didn't come with like paper clamps. I think it's a magnetic a magnetic uh, surface on here. It's a little uh, textured, not sandpapery, but it's got some texture to it. Um, and that's to grab onto the plastics better. This thing gets burning hot apparently, so don't frickin' touch that when you're operating. Um, so I'm gonna get this the the platen level to the to the schmoo dispenser, and that way the schmoo's at the right height to smush because. When when this releases the schmoo, it's got to be at the right height compared to the the lower the lower schmoo platen, um, or you get shitty prints. And we want nice prints, or at least halfway decent prints. Um, but yeah, pretty quiet machine. Couple fans are going. Otherwise, it's the very uh, non-invasive. And I'll tell you one thing: uh, when you invite people down to your basement workshop, and uh, they see a 3D printer just whizzing away in the background, you are so pimp. I mean, nerd, nerdy pimpy. But yeah, that's a that's a cool flex. And people come over and you're like, "Hey, let's go to the basement and get a beer." And then this, this thing's going. And they're like, "What's going on?" And you're like, "I got a 3D printer." And they're like, "Oh shit! Wow, how does it work?" And then that's like the "How does the internet work?" question. You're like, "Well, you know what? You gotta just say, just say it's a robot glue gun on steroids, because that's basically what this is. It turns the plastic into goo. It schmooze it out." Spooges it all over the thing, the the schmoo cools and hardens, and you have a thing made out of special hot snot. So, just yeah, just say it's a robotic, computer-controlled glue gun. Is sort of not too far off from the from reality, but either way, um, this is an interesting take on a 3D printer from a modeling guy and a tool guy and a proppy, whatever, just nerd toy collector, whatever you want to call me. Yeah, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so we're going to turn this off. We're going to go upstairs, figure out our program. I may continue this video in just a couple, you know, minutes of doing a test print. Of having a test print, but we'll see where we go from there. Uh, BRB or have a good night, one or the other. Hey, look at this! We're 3D printing our test pattern. This one, this side has to come down a little. Definitely needs to come down. we got to level it. That one's looking okay over there. This side was very thin and low. I watched a video on YouTube from one of the way nerdier 3D printer people than me. We're doing an active leveling. So we're going to watch it print. We're going to see what the results are. And we're going to potentially adjust things a tiny bit. That's looking okay. All right, <clears throat> we're getting a good solid white line. Right here, we have barely anything. <clears throat> and here you can see it, <clears throat> mostly. Let's zoom in a little more. There you go. Here you can see, very thin here. It's still thin. So we're gonna just keep, we're gonna keep twisting this knob. Oh, you can't see it, it's under the front corner here. It's, uh, there we go, come on, see? Oh, come on, oh, you can't even see anymore. Let's get over here. We got a thin spot right here, so we turn this knob under here that way to lower the platen down so the schmoo is at the correct height for the proper smushing of the goo on the thing. Um, we want it to spooge out nice and even on a level surface. This may be a little bit low over here. That's coming out a little little chunky. There's a little gap in between the lines. <clears throat> little settings. Uh, this is better but still needs, this one needs to go down more in this corner. This is cool. This thing's moving quicker than I thought it would. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep lowering this side until we go too far. That one... Oop. This back side, I'm worried about this back corner being a little, a little too low now. 
That goes that way. That goes that way. This is stringing, so this should come up a little bit. There we go. We raise this corner up a little bit. It's still shitty and stringy. Raise it up a tiny bit more. Yep, see look, now we have a good line coming out on here. We've lowered it. But this is supposed, yeah, see it's grabbing onto stuff. I don't know, it's pulling. I'm not sure, I really don't know anything about these yet. I'm going with a lot of default settings here. I gotta do a little more research. Um, but look at that, freaking 3D printing in the pit stain hobby's basement of, of fun and games. This, I don't know what the hell's that, that's doing. This is making a round, and then the shapes are all over the place. It doesn't seem... Something's a little squiffy, I guess. I'm not quite sure, but... This needs to come up a tiny bit, I think. And this... Let's see if we get another solid white line there. This side's looking good. This pie needs to come up. Up. And this up a little bit. This corner back here looks perfect. This is cool as hell! <laughs> Don't touch the... This, ooh! That, yeah, that's warm. It's not burning hot. The nozzle's at like 200 degrees Celsius. Which is very, very hot. It would, if I touch that, you'd smell bacon, even over YouTube. Um, without the nose inserts that they're developing for all of us soon. So when they insert us into the metaverse, we smell the steak. We think it's real. Very uh, matrixy. Uh, it's lower that. Maybe it's too high. I don't know. No. think I don't know this is looking okay this is looking a little dicey whatever it's why it's a test print interesting okay well this is gonna continue and uh, when it's done I'll, I'll bring us back to our regularly scheduled program so hang in there everybody BRB okay um, <clears throat> you see some remnants from our flat test print um, it's yeah, um, oh, that comes off easier when it's heated again. It was, I was having some trouble scraping off the leftovers of this thing. Either way, I don't want to mess up my current print. Um, well, we're printing out a little test block. It's a little, a little cube with some letters in it and stuff, and look at her go. It's so cool. I mean, I grew up in the 80s. Stuff like this we saw in movies, and it was like, you know, science fiction. And now I've got a robot. Well, not really a robot, but... I'm, I'm getting a 3D printer. This is freaking awesome. It's it's not as cool as the auto transforming Optimus Prime from Robison, but it's damn close. And 99 bucks. I spent about 800 dollars too much to be to be delighted by robotics apparently before. Uh, so that when this is done, I'm gonna we'll show you guys the finished result. I don't think it's gonna be perfect. I think it will be passable for a first try. Literally the first thing I've the first real holdable object I've 3D printed is coming out. Um, in probably about 10 minutes or so. Um, so we'll be back with this exciting, amazing discovery of 3D printing I've made. Yeah! Alright, BRB. Well, would you look at that? <clears throat> We've got a little cube. There's a little bit, a little bit of texture to it. Little, little textury. It's kind of hard to, there we go. I get it just right. So this is our first print of anything. A little two centimeter cube with some letters on it. That came out pretty freaking cool. All right, definitely, definitely more stuff to come from this 3D printer, for sure. Possibly tank parts, possibly other things, possibly tool holders, but who knows? This is awesome. There we go. We're 3D printing down here in Pit Stain Hobbies. Look at that, that's awesome. I'm about uh, three or four years behind Andy's hobby headquarters, I think. But either way, there we go. I'm excited. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to show this cube to my wife. She'll be so unimpressed and annoyed that I spent the last, you know, three hours down here, however long it's been, 
since right after dinner, play, setting up and playing with this new 3D printer. Just yet another thing to take me away from her and the dogs and leaving her with the dogs. Point of contention in the household is my hobbies. But, uh, yeah, it's funny. She supports my passion, yet she, uh, beats the crap out of me for actually, uh, doing it sometimes. It's kind of a funny catch-22 in life. The women, we will never figure them out. They are, they, I was never good at the Rubik's Cube. And that is what their brains are. So, either way, on that note, adios everybody, and have a great night.